Well, hello! Today I'd like to welcome you to my first impressions of an Australian fountain pen. I have been waiting for this since this summer. I think I've told you before about my uh, desire to have a pen from every continent. And right now, thanks to a South American pen that arrived last week that was going to be this review, but you're just going to have to wait a week. Um, and this pen, the only two continents missing, which coincidentally start with A, <laughs> uh, they all do except for Europe, um, Antarctica and Africa. So Africa and Antarctica, step up to the bat. I want to find a fountain pen made in your continent. So let's dive into the pen. So what you're looking at here, this is a JPL pen. This is made by JPL, who is a fountain pen reviewer here on YouTube. He is Australian based and uh, usually reviews lower cost Chinese pens, but every so often he comes up with something you go, whoa, <laughs> dude. Um, so I enjoy his perspective and uh, well, I'm a high school teacher and when he started doing this, he was a high school student. So naturally I had sympathetic leanings toward him. I uh, just kind of have a weakness. <laughs> you know, I, I wouldn't be teaching high school if I didn't like high school students, so had to encourage him. And, uh, of course, he's now a college student. He may even be graduated. I'm not 100% sure on that. Now you can look at his channel. I've got it linked. Actually, I've got the videos linked, but uh, I'll put a link to his channel, too. Um, but he decided to do a Kickstarter and make his own fountain pens, and he demonstrated it using a 3D printer. Well, if you know me, I do 3D printing in my classroom. I have two different courses where I teach 3D printing. I don't have the nice 3D printer he does, but I do have a very nice 3D printer. So he modeled out some fountain pens and then uh, decided to do a Kickstarter where he marketed his own fountain pen. And that's what we're looking at here. So the uh, pen itself is ebonite. It arrives with this nice little, uh, I think it's ebony pen rest, which I may interchange in future videos with my usual glass pen rest. Well, it's something a little different. So we'll set it aside. And, and of course he promised that there would be a pen rest. Uh, the pen is ebonite, but it is spray painted with uh, some kind of a color. This is an Artisan pen, Fountain Pens Classic. Plastic being the pen model, um, in the naphthol red finish. So it's spray paint. It's not, you know, anything too fancy. The cap I found a little tight, but, you know, over time it will probably loosen up. And this is probably a good time to mention I have an unboxing video. I was in Spearfish at the time. In fact, I just got back from Spearfish and it's been a struggle not to ink this pen up and write with it. And just pretend, oh no, really, this is my first impression. I purchased a double broad nib. It's a Bach nib. It's not one of my fun, you know, uh, flexible Bach vintage nibs, but it, you know, it's a Bach nib. Ebonite section, ebonite threads. Open it up. It takes a lot of unscrewing to open it up. And I have, I did put the cartridge or the converter in while I was in the motel, but uh, stopped myself. I didn't put the rest in. And then you have this bit. Uh, I guess if I wanted to offer a criticism, I feel like these could have been the same, but. Uh, not a big criticism, it's an artistic choice. And all made by JPL himself, except for, of course, the nib and feed and such. It, he included this nice uh, wood pen case that he made himself. I think you can see here, Artisan Fountain Pens, which uh, is the name of his company. Models classic, the color is Naphthol. It's ebonite. I ordered the double broad nib. And apparently, I don't know if this is the date it was quality controlled or what. Um, December 11th, 2019, because it's now 2020. JPL is who did the quality control. So 
a little problematic that he's doing his own quality control, but whatever, you know, I don't suppose he has much of a way around that. You know, not the best fit, but, you know, seriously, what am I going to do with this after I'm done? I, I've said before, I don't care for packaging. So, uh, I didn't care that it came in its own handmade pen case. That said, the inside of the pen case is a little rough. You know, I know wood. My dad is a forester. Well, he's retired now, but he is a forester. Uh, my feeling is this is some kind of a soft wood. I'm not sure what kind. I don't really know much about the trees in Australia, other than they have some. Uh, the other thing that arrived in the pen case, besides uh, six cartridges, he did promise uh, four, so I guess I got two bonus ones. Got a pen case, artisan fountain pens, a leather flapper doodle, and then this feels like felt or something. You know, the pen fits in there securely. I guess it protects it. You know, it's not an amazing pen case, but it's not bad either. Eh, again, it's not important to me. Uh, he did promise uh, a cleaning cloth, which was not included, but I guess the two extra cartridges make up for it. Uh, I've heard some complaints that there was no quality control letter, but he says he quality controlled it, so not too worried about that. I'm interested in how the pen writes, and that's what I've been waiting for. But before I do it, because I'm going to force myself, uh, the finish being spray painted isn't... A nice shiny lacquer it's a bit more uneven uh, you, you can even see where some parts are a little smoother than others some have little micro scratches you know with a handmade pen that's what's going to happen I've read about uh, knitters my mother is big into knitting and very good at it uh, some knitters will actually include faults in their knitting just to show that it's handmade so I think actually that the unevenness of the finish shows that it's a handmade pen. You know, the little marks on the section here, again, show handmade pen. So as an ink, I decided to do, don't tip this too much because the cap's off, Roar and Klingner Alt Bordeaux. I've been looking at alternatives for Monte Grappa Bordeaux, so uh, some people suggested this one, so I thought, well, what the heck, let's try it out. Lots of good bubbling. Heard some suction there. I think I had the nib out of the ink, so let's try that again. Lots of bubbling. Much better that time, and we'll do one more time for luck. And sometimes, you know, I haven't cleaned this pen out. Sometimes this is a good way to introduce oils into your ink, but I don't seem to have done that. But I have done that in the past. Uh, with I don't do this, you know, vintage pens always get cleaned out, but brand new pens I'm not always so scrupulous. And uh, I have panicked viewers a few times with bottles with floaties, and nope, it's just oils from a modern pen. But this one, no floaties, so seems to have, done pretty well. Uh, I, I feel like the multiple times I have to screw it on, that's related to making this a eyedropper suitable pen. So this is the Artisan Classic Double Broad. Uh, the ink is Roar and Klingner Alt Bordeaux. Stay tuned to pens in use. I will I can't remember if I still have a pen inked up with Monte Grappa Bordeaux, but I, I do still have a pen inked up with uh, one of the possible replacements for it, so that'll work. That'll just have to work. As far as flex, no. But I do think you can coax some line variation out of this pen. Wetness and flow. So far, so good. The smear test. And 
and reverse writing for those who are into that kind of thing. A uh, slightly scratchy, but a fine. And finally, the world famous Pierre Gustafson test. Now, normally, this is the point at which I pull away and attempt to pocket the pen and see how it clips on. Worth noting, no pen clip. So I won't bother with that test. So what do I think? I'm pleased. I think it writes very well. I think it feels very comfortable. You know, he, he designed a pen that suited him. And the thing with pens is not every pen suits every person. And uh, maybe in some future world with 3D printing and so on, we'll be able to perfectly match the pen to our grip. But there are so many pieces to what makes a pen comfortable and not comfortable. Uh, but on the whole, I think he did pretty well. Uh, I have read some complaints about quality control, but speaking for myself, I'm pleased with it. I will say I was a little disappointed that there was no communication after October and the pens were promised in November. Uh, this one arrived, well, this week, so in January, well, I don't know the exact day, but in January, sometime after the 20th. So uh, yeah, that was a little disappointing, but with a Kickstarter and a brand new product, you don't always know, especially you know, his age, and I, you know, I'm 44, I haven't tried starting a business or doing anything like this. You don't know how long things take. You don't know about what obstacles you'll run into. So he did run into those, I'm sure. He didn't talk about them, and that's a complaint I would have is the lack of communication. You know, just say, oh, we are running into this issue with production. You know, I have a clock in my classroom I bought from a, it wasn't a Kickstarter, it was an Indiegogo, but the same idea. And they were very good about communicating some of their issues. A lot of their issues, I, th I think they even went a little overboard communicating their issues. But, you know, I knew what was going on. I knew why the clock was late. And uh, I could have sent it back because they even offered some options there. And I just like, no, I'm happy with it. And I used some super glue to fix their issue that some people sent them back over. Um, so communication after October would have been nice. Now, um right at the tail end of December, I started to get some updates that, oh, your pen has been put in the mail. Oh, your pen just arrived at customs. Oh, your pen just cleared customs. Oh, your pen's on the way. Oh, your pen has been picked up at the post office. What? I haven't picked up a pen. Well, it turns out it's been delivered to, let's see if I remember the name of the town. No, I don't, so I gotta look. Uh, Corum, New York, which is on Long Island. <laughs> What? I don't live there. This is small town, rural North Dakota. Um, so I commented on the Kickstarter webpage. Uh, well, I sent him a private message. I have no clue if he ever got it because he never responded to it. But a while later, I got another update that same thing. Your pen is on its way. Your pen is in customs. Your pen is cleared customs. Um, and on Friday, which is yesterday, uh, I realize I, this video comes out Monday, but, you know, that's the recording thing. I got a message that, oh, your pen has been picked up, which this time it was by me in my little small town. So, <laughs> good news, the pen is here. So, on the whole, I'm happy with it. Um, is this an Edison pen or, a, you know, one of the people who've been at it for a long time? No, this is a beginning. Uh, I will be curious to see what JPL does with this, if he continues to try to make fountain pens or if he's written it off. You know, I know uh, Goulet Pens had its start as a pen maker and then he wrote it off and decided, nope, I'm just going to sell other people's pens. Uh, he has formed a good partnership with uh, Brian Edison of Edison Pens and uh, Edison Pens has gone the route of making their own pens. There are, uh, I've never used one, but there's uh, Jim Hines Pens, Tactile Turn, Conid, uh, Bexley, and a couple others, you know, that just aren't coming to me right now. 
uh, bespoke pens. I, I've shown you a kit pen that a student of mine made. Um, that student of mine maybe could have gone JPL's route at some point, but he didn't. He's chosen other things in his life, which is fine. Uh, we can't all be pen makers because uh, I, I don't know if the custom pen market's saturated. I know if you're really good, like Conid, ooh, they, uh, they've had to say, yeah, we're not selling for a while because we need to catch up. Um, so I see a lot of potential with this pen. Uh, when you're new in a business, there's a lot you don't know. Uh, just like being new in anything. So probably he didn't know, realize that the lack of communication really puts people off. Um, you know, it's just going to take time to see where this goes. And he hasn't given any indication of there, if there's anything coming after this. So I'll be curious to know. So, have you ordered a JPL pen? Let us know down in the comments. What was your experience? Like I said, I've heard some really positives, and I've heard some very negatives. So, let us know. Well, thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.